Okay, so this is Victor and Quantum Joker. Uh, we're going to talk about a few films, starting with uh, Clockwork Orange, and um, I should tell you spoilers on all of these. All right. Well, it, it, it seems to me as if um, Kubrick is one of those directors um, who has, has produced films, as a, say, f the films of his that I like, I, I really enjoy, whereas there are the films of, of, of his that I don't like, I, I really dislike, I'm afraid. Uh, y you know that I, I, I don't really like uh, Dr. Strangelove, and I'm afraid that's the same with, with Clockwork Orange. What, oh, what are your thoughts? Interesting. Well, um, let's see. I guess with Clockwork Orange, I had mixed feelings. It was very... It was a very dreary and slow-moving film in a lot of ways. Uh, when I was when I was uh, looking it over, at one point I had it uh, I had it going where uh, to get screen cap captures. I, mm -hmm. um, I was just playing without sound, and I realized that there was a static shot of uh, the preacher guy and um, and uh, the main character just standing there in mm -hmm. the same light, not moving at all. I thought for a second for a minute that I had it on pause, <laughs> but this was like a five-minute span of them talking. Uh, and in the end, there's very little to this story, <laughs> in a way. Yeah. Well, um, like like Dr. Strangelove and, and all the other uh, films directed by Kubrick, I, I thought Clockwork Orange was a, an exquisitely produced movie, but um, I, I suppose I didn't like the moral angle of the film. Uh, morally, uh, I just couldn't find. I, I couldn't find really where the moral was. I, I guess. I guess the question was to make you question. Uh, well, question a lot of things. Uh, nature versus nurture. Mm -hmm. The the actual the way we handle prisoners, freedom, all that other stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I think the, the first aspect of, of Clockwork Orange that really turned me off, so to speak, would would, would um, have been. I suppose the, the the very odd style uh, used to render, say, the, the rape and murder scenes. It's almost as if the film uh, glamorizes such activities as, as readily as it criticizes them. That that's what it seemed to me. I, I suppose I didn't I didn't like this um, the the black humor of the film. Black humor is something that that actually. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's my cynical soul, but I, yeah. it, it redeems it for me a little bit. <laughs> um, but but beyond that, really, it's I kind of have to agree. There is definitely a glamorization in it, and and I guess that's one of those things as being a mo modern uh, watcher mm -hmm. of the film. I think at the time there was that kind of sense of, of trying to break boundaries in society, the the glamorization of the counterculture itself, uh, and and so you are made to sympathize with a character who is completely unsympathetic. Mm. I mean, he deserves to, if anyone deserves painful behavior modification, it is uh, this character. And and yet, I guess that that's the one redeeming aspect of this film, mm. by the way, is that, is that you actually, at some point, just because you realize that, that he's, be, he's been declawed, there's no joy to be had in him getting his just desserts, because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. He gets beat up by the hobos that he beat up in the originally. He the guys he abused and talked down to, uh, abused and talked down to him, and yet you, you end up almost sympathizing with a, a little wannabe Hitler monster. Yeah, I, I didn't find that. Um, I suppose I'm, I'm in spite of myself. Uh, I should say, I right. actually found myself quite uh, well. Fearful for Alex's safety, as he, as as his his former friends held him, held his face in that horse trough. Uh, yeah. I he was never once likable, but um, weirdly enough, I uh, well, uh, that was I was very anxious in that scene. Yeah. And and I guess that's that's part yeah that's part of what makes it an effective. I mean that's part of what makes Scuba, Scuba, Kubrick Kubrick <laughs> a um, a. a competent director, I mean, yeah. or more than competent, he he can do that. Um, the, in theory, you really shouldn't be be um, at all sympathetic or anxious for the survival of Alex. Hmm. But you are, to a point. Th that, that's another thing. Um, you, you would remember toward the end of the film, um, 
uh, Alex, uh, after being beaten by those policemen, he, he seeks refuge with um, the, the husband of, of the person, who, uh, uh, the, the, the husband of the, of the woman whom he, he raped. Uh, sorry? Oh, assaulted, I was just saying. Yeah, uh, uh, some time back. I, and the, the film ultimately ends with um, Alex recovering in hospital after jumping out of a window. He was essentially, uh, he, he decided to commit suicide rather than listen to Beethoven. I really didn't like that ending. Uh, as you've said, um, it's, it's near impossible to sympathize with Alex. And, well, for the over, overwhelming majority of the film... Um, I, I didn't, of course, how could you? But um, I felt as if, well, to say, at best, um, Alex is an anti-hero, uh, at, at best. But it, it felt as if the, the, the husband of, of this, this um, uh, rape victim um, was almost portrayed as a villain in himself. Say, so I, I didn't, well, say, if, if anyone deserves to be thrown out of, out of a window... It's Alex, but I, I didn't I didn't like the, like seeing the almost sadistic pleasure on on the guy's face as he was subjecting Alex to to that torture. And uh, and I guess that that's one of those things I noticed in the film. I mean, yeah. I, I agree. There's kind of there's something severely uncomfortable about that, obviously, mm. because he, he Alex is basically infected <laughs> some of these people. Hmm. But um, but that's the thing is that the, the part of that whole counterculture movement concept is that the the guys that you're really kind of supposed to be like uh, what what swears or whatever the preacher the uh, the kind of goofy um, uh, warden guy I forget I forget what his place was but the guy who's always uh, shouting out orders hmm. and even the some somewhat cynical um, uh, but but overall seemingly good um, uh, book guy who, who ends up going sadistic uh, on Alex at the end. You're, they're basically decent people, it seems like. The preacher wants to help, even though he's part of an establishment. Mm -hmm. And yet at that time, I think you're supposed to view them as almost the enemy, and, and thus Alex is, a, is an anti-hero. And I don't know if that carries over. I should point out here that, like you, this is not a film uh, in Kubrick's collection that I was overly enthused with. Mm. I I would say I didn't like it in general, as a viewing experience at least. Yeah. 